Hey guys, what's up? Rain Actions here and welcome back to this brand new video. And today we are at a track that you guys have never seen before. Because today we are in Pottendijk Emmen, which is right here. And uh, we are taking part in the Dutch Tillotson T4 series, which is run at the same time as the Dutch NXT series. So yeah, new class for us today. Uh, of course we tested the Tillotson a few, uh, few months back and I loved it. So yeah, I'm here doing races. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting day. It's raining, uh, no practice, going straight into race day. So uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. All right, so this is the machine for today. Tillerson T4, you guys have seen it in a previous video. Four stroke, uh, I don't know how many horsepowers, but I think like 15 or something. And uh, yeah, this is our uh, office for today. And also we are a guest driver today at the pit part team. So yeah, we have uh, scrutineering in a couple of minutes and then uh, time to do the warm up. Alright guys, welcome aboard the Tillotson T4 Series Senior Card. 4 stroke, 15 brake horsepower, only 155 kilograms, uh, custom made chassis, uh, customly engineered engine. This class really is something very unique and uh, I am very lucky that I am allowed to race in it for this season. So a big thank you to everyone who made it possible and uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. As you can see, we are at a track that you guys have probably never seen on the channel before. Uh, it's called Pottendijk Emmen. Um, yeah, it's just... Uh, it, it used to be on the Dutch Championship uh, like a few years ago, uh, but then uh, there was uh, an accident here, a very big accident, which made them uh, yeah, lose their safety license. So it's not uh, qualified anymore for uh, uh, official um, FIA Dutch Championships. Uh, but for the Tillerson uh, Series Netherlands, it was allowed, so uh, that's why you're racing here. And uh, what's actually quite funny is that I have never driven the track uh, uh, this way around, because usually it's the other way around. Uh, but this track is designed so that it can be run in both directions, so that's uh, cool to add some variety. And uh, also, a uh, huge shout out to the uh, Pit Parts team. Uh, we are a guest driver there. Uh, I haven't really mentioned them in the vlog part, but uh, go follow them on Instagram. Uh, this is their Instagram, it's on screen right now. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, now going to take you on a tour of the uh, Pottendijk Emma circuit. Here you can see a very long sweeping final corner, and uh, we enter one of the longest straights actually in karting, uh, getting up to about 102, 103 kilometers per hour in the T4 kart. As we now brake for turn one, very bumpy, a hairpin to the right. We turn in, uh, we turn a little bit too aggressively because we get a little bit of oversight there on the exit. Then we uh, get into a uh, flowing left hander which has very high curves and some a ditch on the inside. Then into a right hand hairpin which you want to take a little bit more towards the inside but I was still learning the track here. Then into the technical bit, uh, left hander, right hander and a double left hander there to follow which is almost flat out. You don't want to take that curb because it will just uh, give you a massive jolt. Then into another technical bit here you want to take uh, more curb than I did here but I was still kind of figuring out the track. Here take a lot of curb because it's flat. On the left here take a lot of curb because it's flat. And now we go into the snail section. Turn in. I turn a little bit too aggressively get a little bit of oversteer. Then into the right hand hairpin and that flows immediately into the long flowing right hand corner onto the main straight again so yeah it's a really interesting track i actually really like the layout the only thing that's strange about this track is that it's really bumpy and you can well because the tillotson it's not as fast as a rotex but if you drive your rotex here you can really see the amount of ho uh, wobbling that we get on the straight here we uh, managed to catch up to the number 86 uh, we're kind of following him as you can see i'm still kind of learning the lines because uh, it's actually race day already and i just showed up in the warm-up no practice no mechanic uh, so yeah, it was uh, a little bit more challenging than uh, uh, how it could have been. Uh, but don't worry, for the next race uh, I will actually do some practice and maybe I'll have a mechanic, I don't know yet. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, you can see here that we're now uh, we are behind the number 86 still and we are actually kind of able to keep up. But I'm making a little bit of mistakes. Uh, one of the guys from Tillotson actually told me that I was, uh, he could see that I was uh, used to a Rotex. Because the tires that are on the Tillotson, the wet tires, believe it or not, are actually faster than what we have on the Rotex. So I would kind of have to get used to it as we get, uh, as we do a little bit of a dive from there. But one thing with the Tillotson series is that it's really easy to get uh, switchbacked, which is what happened to us there. So uh, yeah, he did switchback on us, and uh, yeah, not that good. But uh, now it's uh, actually already time uh, to head into qualifying. Alright guys, welcome to qualifying. Um, yeah, just like with Rotex, you just get uh, like a 10 minute session in which you uh, can do as many laps as you want and your best lap will be count as your qualifying time. And here, uh, track position again is super important and I chose to go behind uh, Tim van Elleswijk, who is the current championship leader, as you can tell by the number one on his card there. And uh, yeah, I just try to get uh, as good lap time as possible. Um, it's actually quite interesting, uh, this series, because um, 
usually like for Rotex or for the ID engines, uh, you get a new set of tires for every race. But for this class, to kind of limit the uh, costs for everyone, you can only use three sets of slick tires and two sets of wet tires uh, for the entire season. And the slicks will easily last uh, for the entire season. But the wets, in my opinion, they wear out a little bit too quickly or I was driving a little bit too aggressively. It's also very, <laughs> also very much possible because, uh, well, my Rotex wets also wear out quite fast. Um, so yeah, you really also have to kind of take tire management into, uh, into the back of your head, which of course will uh, develop you into a better driver if you also have to think about that. But uh, now we are going uh, to go into our best lap. You can see that Tim has absolutely bolted away. Uh, there you can see us uh, getting small behind the steering wheel to get the best straight line speed, then breaking for the hairpin, turn in, be as smooth as possible. It's really just a case of uh, being as smooth as possible, just like with Protex. And also this thing, uh, the power compared to the amount of grip that the tires have is relatively low. So the more smooth you are, the less you will slide and the more corner speed you will carry, which means that you will be faster. And that's definitely also the case with this. There you can see that we could now barely take the left hander flat out, so we're definitely gaining some confidence. On the Micron you see that we actually have some green sectors, as we actually have a yellow flag there. Uh, but luckily we got away with setting our best lap time during yellow flags, uh, which is uh, kind of lucky. Um, now going through the snail section, um, yeah, it's just try to be as smooth as possible. I really tried my best to, uh, to, well, to do that. And uh, that actually resulted in us getting B3 there in the end. Which I think is pretty decent uh, without setup and uh, well, of course, with the setup, but without a mechanic and no practice. Uh, the guys, uh, yeah, who were I was competing with, most of them were already testing for the day before there, so yeah, pretty good. All right, uh, yeah, pre practice and qualifying done, got P3 in the end. Um, so yeah, I need to work a little bit on my driving. Also, we were a little bit too heavy and I went a little bit too high on tire pressure, so yeah, we should be good for the race. But yeah, let's see. Just for fun, so let's see where we end. Alrighty guys, welcome to the grid of the Tillerson T4 Series Netherlands. We actually have a standing start, which is a first for me, as we use the windscreen wiper there. We have to look at the man with the flag over there, as he holds it up right about, uh, well, almost, almost now. And you can go when he drops the flag, so that's right there and then. We hop off to get a, a better start, and you can see that we didn't really get the best of launches. We lose that position immediately, but because we have the inside for the first corner, we keep P3 for now, so uh, now it is uh, our job to uh, get our head down and try to keep up with the leaders because um, right now they're still a little bit quicker than me, about yeah, a couple of tenths a lap as you saw there in qualifying. So it is really important now that we try to keep up, uh, maybe profit from their battling so if or when they lose time, when they overtake each other, maybe we can sneak it up the inside somewhere, do a cheeky little dive bomb. Uh, but for that it is important that we are actually keeping up and that they also start fighting a little bit, which uh, was still a little bit challenging as I was still kind of getting used to uh, this class as we have a little bit of an overstay moment there, which is of course not ideal. Um, but yeah, I was just pushing, trying to my best to keep up with them and to see if I can maybe mount an attack when they made a mistake or something. But you can see already that they are absolutely bolting away. And also guys, um, as we enter lap 2 now, I want to say a massive thank you for the 19,000 subscribers that we are almost uh, hitting. Very soon actually. Um, and also, if you are watching this video and if you are still enjoying the content as much as you usually do, please consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons, you know, you really help me when you do that. And also, another thing, I'm going to do a giveaway when we reach 20k subscribers. Another thing that happened in this race was, uh, yeah, that the uh, cam box unfortunately ran out of battery. So yeah, we don't really have the full race uh, on the camera. But nothing really happened, I stayed in P3. But I did manage to get the fastest lap in the end there because we went a little bit too low on tire pressures. The track started drying and the track kind of came towards us. So that's why we got the fastest lap. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do in race two. All right, guys, that was the uh, first race. Yeah, just a uh, little bit uh, too slow. Uh, in the end, it did work because we went really low on tire pressure. But uh, yeah, a little bit too late. So yeah, we'll see. Now it's actually time for slicks and I just have a look and almost everyone is still on wets. So we're going to be one of the only ones on slicks. So yeah, let's uh, see what we can do. All right then, here we are on the grid for race two. It was a little bit chaotic before the start of the race because a lot of people were still switching setups and away we go. This time we actually do get a little bit of a better launch. So we stay in P3 this time actually as he covers uh, me off on the inside there. Uh, but we bluff him off, uh, stay P3 for now and you can, guys can already see the track is half wet and half dry and that is perfect. Those are my favorite conditions because I just feel a lot more confident than usual. And here we go up the inside of Tim van Ellerswijk. We are now up into P2, that was a little bit of a forceful move. We kind of barged him out of the way there but uh, yeah, no love lost there. We are still in this race, he is still in this race and we are now in P2. Um, so yeah, now it is important to keep our head down, push, 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 try to overtake the number one guy. And I already knew that I had a massive pace advantage in this one. Um, 
and as you can already see here in the dry parts and also a little bit in the wet parts we are just gaining a lot on the number 90 there and also we went for a full dry setup with a little bit more grip on the front but also in terms of sprockets you see there that uh, our car is set up more for top speed and for acceleration so we can actually go for the dive from here into turn one boom job done we are now into p1 so now it was really a case of using that dry setup that we have on here to kind of pull away from the field um, for that it was important that we don't make mistakes like that but that we can keep a lot of corner speed so that we can keep that average speed high so that uh, we are not really negatively affected by the small sprocket that we are running because as you guys know a smaller sprocket means more top speed and a larger sprocket means more acceleration and I had the feeling that the other drivers in the class uh, kind of just took the rain setup and put slicks on there and um, you can do that, but for my opinion, it was a little bit too dry already. So that's why I gambled more on a more dry setup. Also in terms of tire pressure, we went a little bit too low. I would have liked it to be a bit more air in the uh, tires. And uh, well, you can tell that by uh, the fact that we are now on lap five. And I actually started to struggle a little bit. I wasn't really getting enough heat into the tires. So I knew that every passing lap the track would come towards me. But the guy behind me, he had a much better launch of the previous corner. And he can overtake me right here into a... Uh, very unusual spot to overtake it, but he just had that overspeed on me and he could just go for the move there. So that's a pretty good move as we actually bump uh, into his rear bumper there. Luckily this class is not a front fairing penalty, so we get a little bit lucky there. And here also you can see his car is set up more for acceleration. And once we get to the second part of the straight, our car is set up more for top speed. And he knows it because you can see that he's defending because we are slipstreaming and we're getting quite a lot on him here. We try to break around the outside, but we can't really do it. He forces us into the wet part, very smart of Tim there. Uh, but unfortunately for him, um, once we entered Park Ferme, uh, there was something uh, in the setup that was not correct on this card, uh, and that was that his uh, rear axle was too wide. Uh, when you uh, change from slicks to wet tires, you have to move the, uh, the, uh, uh, the wheel hubs a little bit more towards the inside because the wet tires are smaller than the uh, slicks. And if you just uh, leave the uh, wheel hubs in the wet tire position, um, the card will exceed the maximum allowed width. And I already noticed that when he overtook me, I saw it already. And then, uh, well, the race is over, he won, but he was actually running an illegal setup. And in the wet, I think that kind of does make a difference. It does give you a lot more understeer, but it also gives you a lot more traction. Uh, so yeah, that means that we actually inherited uh, the lead, uh, the, the win there, actually. Um, yeah, we uh, set a 47-4, so we're now definitely on the pace. But unfortunately, Tim got uh, uh, disqualified there for, uh, yeah, just a silly mistake. It can happen to anyone, really. Um, so yeah, a little bit unfortunate for him, but I'm happy that we got the win and uh, yeah, that's a good uh, indicator for uh, the races to come. So let's see what we can do there. Alright people, welcome to the third and final heat of the day. We are now waiting again for the man with the flag to raise the flag, which he does right here, and away we go. This time there's no fire red lights, of course, just like the other two heats. Um, but we get actually get a not too good of a getaway. We lose the lead there temporarily, but we just are the last of the late breakers, go into turn one, and we are still in the lead. Look behind us there to see if anyone did a switchback, but they didn't. So we can really just bolt away, uh, focus on pulling away, uh, not make mistakes like I did there again. That, that corner seems to kind of catch us off guard. It's now this guy behind us actually could pull alongside there, which is, of course, not what you want. But we are still in the lead, so... Uh, Nothing is lost yet, so we can still focus on pulling away uh, using uh, the uh, track conditions to our advantage because as you can see it's still a little bit wet, still a little bit drizzling, but we are on slicks and you guys know that that is my strongest. Uh, I am just performing at my best when it, whenever it's these conditions, so I knew that too. I just wanted to pull away uh, as much as possible and I think that it was kind of working because uh, behind me, of course, uh, the, the biggest threat was Tim who had got a disqualification in the previous heat. He got pole, won the first heat, and um, yeah, I knew that he was a big threat, but he actually g already gained like five positions on the first lap, or before the first corner even, and the field is only 10 drivers strong at this moment, so if you want to join the Tillis and T4 series and race against me, definitely do it, because um, yeah, we just want more drivers in the class, that of course makes it only more fun than it already is right now. Um, but yeah, he gained five positions already before the start, and I believe he was already up to P4, like at the end of lap one. So, uh, yeah, he was actually going through the field quite good. Um, Tim also races in the Dutch four-stroke series with the ID engines, so he's a really experienced guy. So that's why I was kind of uh, having to drive my balls off to beat him. Um, but yeah, um, it's lap 11 now. We are still in the lead. Tim is like two tenths behind me because he overtook the entire field and was lapping faster than I was. But I just kept our head cool, didn't make any mistakes. And as you can see now, we are definitely starting to get the, the hang of driving the Tillotson car. Just be smooth everywhere, no sliding, no 
big lockups, and you, you can see that, that, that that's definitely what we're doing. Then coming into the double right hander here, just turn in very gently, smooth steering inputs, get on the power nice and early, take through the curves, no sliding, and yeah, you can see that just, it just looks a lot smoother than what it was in this morning. Now, coming around the final corner, onto the start finish straight, we are going to get our second or our third heat win of the uh, of the season actually, but this is the actually only the real second one because of course we got the last one because P1 got disqualified. And yeah, it feels good to uh, to win another race this year. Couldn't say that last year, could we? Uh, yeah, as you can see there, we won the race uh, 46.1 minute. 46.1 is our best lap. Tim did a 46.0, so he was definitely a little bit quicker than us. But uh, yeah, for our debut in this uh, new class, no mechanic, no practice, I think we did uh, decently well enough. Alright guys, P1, yeah, pretty good. Um, yeah, pretty boring race actually from the camera. A um, little bit tense uh, with the pressure from behind. Uh, the guy who did the fast slap, he was like this close to my bumper in the final corner, so that was a bit close, but yeah, we did it. Good. I think we're also P1 of the day, so that's good. And uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's clean this thing, and after that, we'll go to the uh, prize ceremony. Boom, job done, yeah. Managed to get enough points to get P1, so that's good. But we actually got two prizes today. So yeah, it's quite a fun day. Um, but yeah, I'm really tired. Uh, Alright guys, so that was our fun little day with the Death Tillotson T4 series. Yeah, I really enjoyed the day. It's something completely different to what I'm used to, but I really enjoyed the challenge of, you know, getting there and trying to do my best possible. And we ended with a win, so that's, uh, yeah, quite nice. So we'll definitely be doing more races of the Tillerson T4 series and uh, if you want to know a little bit more about them, uh, well, follow them on Instagram, it's on screen right now, go check out their website, that's in the description and uh, well, just ask questions in the comments. With that guys, also comes the end to this video. If you enjoyed it, you guys know it, please remember to hit those like and subscribe buttons, you know, you really help me when you do that. We're actually almost going to hit 20,000 subscribers, which is just insane, I, I never expected this at all. Now the week before this we actually took part in the Dutch two stroke championships with my own Rotex Max card. It was also in the wet and you guys know I do well in the wet so definitely go check out this video right here. This is on screen right now. This video however is done and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.